Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. As you continue on your journey, we are here to support you every single step of the way. Have you started your seven-week study plan yet? If not, we want to outline right now what that's going to be for you. Okay, so week one or step one in our process is making sure you purchase the resources that you need. If you're not sure about what those resources are, go ahead and check out our description right here on our YouTube episode, and you will see recommended references that are aligned with NLN to ensure that you have the right resources to help you close your knowledge gaps, okay? So week one, that's what it's all about, making sure you have the right resources in front of you. Week two is when you're going to jump into content related to your CNE competencies. Remember that each candidate handbook is published by NLN based on the certification exam that you will be taking. So head over to NLN.org and that's where you're gonna find under the NLN certification tab, the CNE, the CNE novice or the CNE clinical candidate handbook. This is going to be a very valuable resource to help you on your journey to ensure that you are closing your knowledge gaps as aligned with the detailed exam blueprint. That is the resource that we use as we develop the, our curriculum content for every single resource that we recommend. All right, and then what you're gonna see in that seven week study plan is that you will continue on your journey, even if it takes you longer than seven weeks, that's okay. If you all are not familiar with my story, um, Dr. Bridget Sellers, I had an eight year study plan. That's right, you heard me correctly. Part of the challenges associated with that eight year study plan is that I wasn't sure where to start. I had limited resources or it really didn't know what resources I needed to use to ensure I was closing my knowledge gap and the lack of community or support that I needed just wasn't available. We here at Dr. Sellers Educate have removed some of those challenges that you too may be experiencing. So it doesn't take you eight years like it did for me. All right, so you're gonna see in the description some additional resources to help you shorten your journey by maximizing the utilization of your time because you have all of the resources. You have community options here. We have a monthly boot camp, and we meet and specifically focus on those NLN competencies, okay? And then the update, the last update I wanna provide for you all is that we are launching a new series in this episode. Um, when you subscribe to our channel, you are notified every single time a new episode is released. In this series, what we're focusing on really is based on feedback they're here, we're hearing from nurse educators that are on the journey or who have successfully passed the CNE, CNE clinical or CNE novice exam. And that is related to learning theory. This continues to be a gap for so many nurse educators and we want to help you um, close that knowledge gap as you move forward on your journey. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our content for today. And then what I want you all to do is pull out, while I'm pulling up this episode, um, make sure you are pulling out your resources to ensure you're closing your knowledge gaps. And most importantly, stand focused, right? So that you can maximize this time that you're gonna spend reviewing the content here. We also have a YouTube directory. We now are at more than 100 episodes and we wanna make sure that you indeed are staying focused on the content that you need to help you close your knowledge gap. So go ahead, you can pause this video right now, print out the snapshot worksheet, put today's date, whatever date that is for you. And then you wanna just take notes as you review the content here and develop an individualized plan for yourself to ensure that you are closing your knowledge gaps. Okay, so the who, what, why related to learning theory. Let's start with our practice question in case you all have not seen that question. It is also located in the description here on our YouTube channel, or if you're listening to our podcast, we're happy to welcome you all as well. You will see this specific question. Cobb's experiential learning theory is based on concrete experiences or situations. The learner that is more connected to content when watching and thinking while seeking clear ex explanations is associated with which type of learner? Option A is converging, B is assimilating, C is accommodating, and D is reflecting. So you can pause this video and write down the answer that you think is the correct one. And then when you're ready to continue with the content review, um, you can come back at that time. 
first step that we want to cover is the what. What do we mean when we talk about Cobb's experiential learning theory? And why is this content so important for you all to know as part of your certification journey? Um, at first, this content is aligned with several different concepts as part of our detailed exam blueprint. So learning theory, of course. And then we have facilitate learning, evaluation strategies, facilitate learning development, and socialization. What you will find when you review the content in Billings and Halstead, there are a couple of resources we want to point out, um, but there's also some content in Dr. Caputi's Red Book. Now, if you're on your CNE journey, you already have Dr. Caputi's review book. And if you're on the CNE CL journey, we don't want you to purchase any additional resources. Okay, we want you to have Teresa's resource and Billings and Halstead. And specifically in looking at Cobb's experiential learning theory, you want to go over to table 14.1 um, in Billings and Halstead and also review content that's listed in chapter 14. This is gonna provide a great um, review of content that you will use to help you close your knowledge gaps as we review these series. All right, so we're start starting with Cobb. You may hear it called um, Kolb as well, okay? So specifically looking at this theory, do know that this theory um, and really this framework is based on actual experiences that our students have in the clinical setting. We are able to help coach and really draw parallels between what students' experiences are in the clinical setting and the concepts that we are teaching them in the classroom, okay? So it brings those two together to ensure students are competent in demonstrating those specific skills. Wanna share that we have um, celebrated Carolyn before, but I wanna point out that she did pass her exam on her first attempt. We were super excited to celebrate with her. There are some key components though that we wanna take from her testimonial. You see here, she says she took part in our boot camps and self-paced exam review, and she watched many YouTube videos. We want to make sure that you are using all of the resources that are available to you. These YouTube videos that are available um, with a new episode every week, they're going to supplement your content review of concepts that may be large gap areas for you. We have a YouTube directory that you want to check out, as I mentioned earlier, right here in the description. This is going to help ensure that you are maximizing your time. Okay, so if it's not a large gap area for you, there is no need for you to review the content. But it is if it is a gap area for you, then you wanna ensure in your last three weeks of your seven week study plan, you want to ensure that you are reviewing all of the content associated with those specific topics. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about who. In this specific practice question, it is the assimilating group that we are talking about, okay? And if we go to our Billings and Halstead resource, you are going to review table 14.1, which page 252 includes information about the experiential learning theory. I do wanna point out one other important note when I talk about the who. We wanna think of the learning theories um, with our learning preferences of our students, okay? So when we think about understanding concepts and really the framework associated with each of these learning theories over the next several weeks, we always want to consider what our students' learning needs may be when they are an assimilator. I will go ahead in full disclosure and tell you that I am a strong assimilator. And what does that mean? I am the type of learner that does like working alone. Okay, so as I'm describing what an assimilator looks like in your classroom, think about what teaching strategies you may want to integrate and how we evaluate this specific type of learner. Okay, so they like to work alone. These learners are highly logical and organized. They enjoy reading and lectures because again, they're, they pull from the individual learning experiences. Okay, and they come from a framework of asking what else is there for me to learn? Okay, so they are very self-directed, um, they ask a lot of questions because they want to have clear explanations. They want to know the scientific evidence associated with a practice that they may be utilizing in the clinical setting. Some other context you want to be familiar with is on table 2.3 
in Dr. Caputi's review book, if that's part of um, the resources that you already have, if you're taking a CNE. Again, if you're not, I don't want you purchasing any, re any additional resources. You will see some additional context um, in Billings and Halstead related to Cobb on page 30 as well, okay? And then just to wrap up our conversation for this episode, again, we'll pick back up um, next week and talking about uh, an additional learning theory, but next we wanna cover the how. So how do we evaluate these students? Um, there are several ways we can evaluate them. First, knowing that I've now described what an assimilator looks like, we wanna be knowledgeable about all four different types of learning preferences, okay? And that is going to be our divergers, our assimilators, our convergers, and our accommodators. We want to determine what teaching strategies are most aligned with all of these different learning styles associated with COBE's experiential learning theory. And we want to consider how can we best evaluate and validate that learning has happened. Well, we know because this learning theory is strongly aligned with actual demonstration, practice, hands-on experiences. We want to assess, right, visually. You can see in this diagram, we have um, someone, a clinician taking a vital sign. We have a clinician that's listening, using their stethoscope to perhaps abdominal sounds. So we want to ensure that we're doing our part as a nurse educator to Number one, be knowledgeable about the concepts associated with COBE's experiential learning theory. What are those underpinnings? Second, underpinnings. Second, how do we integrate these teaching strategies and who are these learners in our classroom? How do they best connect with the content so we can develop a holistic teaching strategy that is going to connect and align and ultimately engage this type of learner? And then third, how do we evaluate them? That's going to be based on not only how our learners um, tend to learn best and engage best in the learning experience, because we're coaches, right? We're facilitating this learning process. We're engaging with our learners in a way that enables them to connect with our content. And then we're able to validate that learning has actually happened. Again, we want to align it with that framework and with those concepts associated with the learning theory and with Tobe, as we said today, we want to evaluate and assess um, based on our visual observation. All right, this is going to include conclude our snapshot for this episode. Feel free to reach out if you have questions, info at drsellerseducate.com, and you can check out all of the programs that we offer on our website. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.